Hi there, in this revision video, we're going to take a look at the key concepts of monopoly and economic welfare. Monopoly or market power is basically when a firm dominates a market and it gives the firm significant leverage, autonomy and freedom as to how much they can charge for a good or service. A good example is the Italian firm Luxottica, which owns over 40% of the US sunglass market and has a major presence in many other advanced and emerging countries. And there's a big, wide-ranging debate about the impact of firms such as Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Apple and Google, the extent to which these digital platforms, these social media giants, have too much market power. What is the impact of monopoly on consumer welfare? So monopoly power refers to a situation where a single firm has significant control over a market for a particular product or service. And this allows the business to set prices and output levels without worrying too much about competition from other businesses. So a monopoly has price making power rather than price taking behavior we associate with perfect competition. It means it basically they can charge what it wants for the products without fear of losing market share, particularly when barriers to entry are high. The downside obviously is that consumers end up paying higher prices and have less choice because there's limited competition in the market. So Monopoly faces a downward sloping average revenue curve, their demand curve, with marginal revenue lying below AR. A profit maximising monopoly could, in theory, set an output of Q1 and set a price P1. And if the unit cost is AC1, then that shows the level of Monopoly super normal profits. Now, crucially, a monopoly is able to charge a price well above the actual marginal cost of supplying the good or service, which is at point C. So therefore, although there is still some consumer surplus equal to the area E, A, P1, uh, there's a deadweight welfare loss equal to the area A, B, C, because price is well above marginal cost. And if a firm was to charge lower price at P2, for example, that would lead to lower prices for consumers, an expansion along the demand curve from Q1 to Q2, and an increase in consumer surplus. The area of consumer surplus would increase to E, B, P2. Now, they'd still make profit, but the level of total supernormal profit shaded there would be lower. So the classic arguments against monopoly are firstly that prices are higher than under competition, and that leads to a deadweight loss of economic efficiency and welfare, specifically a loss of allocative efficiency. Linked to that, high monopoly prices can have regressive effects on low-income households. Uh, people who are on below average incomes, their spending power gets diminished when they're having to pay high prices for basic goods. The absence of competition in the market may lead to X inefficiencies, such as wasteful marketing spend and high executive salaries. And in theory, a monopoly may lose productive efficiency as well. They may get too big, leading to internal diseconomies of scale in the long run. However, and we look at this in separate videos, there are some potential upsides, some advantages to market power. First of all, monopoly profits can be used to fund extra investment and R&D, research and development. And in theory, if these firms are paying their taxes, that generates extra corporate tax revenue flowing into a government. A natural monopoly, and we have a separate video on this, benefits from big internal economies of scale, which might benefit consumers in the long run. And a domestic monopoly often faces global competition. We need monopolies operating at scale to compete successfully on both price and cost in international markets. Regulators have a role to play. So monopolistic firms can be regulated, uh, with the regulator acting as, if you like, as a proxy consumer, perhaps with price capping power, to help keep prices down and to set minimum quality and standards of service. And as we'll see in other videos, monopolies, of course, don't just charge a single price for their product. They engage in price discrimination. And that might actually help lower income families, particularly if services are provided free or at low price to consumers, for example, using social tariffs. It's important when you're thinking about monopoly and revision uh, to uh, judge the economic and social consequences of monopoly on a case by case basis. See what monopolies actually do rather than, rather than what the textbook would suggest. Indeed, a monopoly might act more competitively if there is an element of contestability in one or more of their main markets.